Greetings, Earthlings! This is Mario Kart Super Circuit on the Game Boy Advance. It's barely 3D with simple controls and only 8 characters, and yet this is the version of the iconic plumber's racing game that I always come back to. The strategic depth, the tight design space, the visual simplicity, they all work in harmony to create my ideal Mario Kart. Mario Kart Wii is a pretty cool game, but the strategy basically just boils down to drifting all the time and never letting anyone close enough to bump you off the ideal path. Well, that and playing that the inevitable blue shell comes at a convenient time for you. In Super Circuit though, drifting is still pretty strong, but the map design makes it nearly impossible to just hold R forever and win. There are corners tight enough that you need to let off the gas, there are wide enough that Bunny hopping is ideal, and there are even a lot of places where you have to choose between getting an item, a boost, or an ideal racing line. Additionally, many of the obstacles that cause you to spin out can be countered by briefly hitting the brakes. Sometimes I'll purposely run over a banana peel because the brake tap loses less time than going around it. The limitation of only holding one item at a time also forges the strategic approach to gaining, holding, and using items. In Mario Kart Super Circuit, the most mushrooms you can have at one time in a normal race is one. Just one. In Mario Kart Wii, you can have two golden mushrooms that give you unlimited boosts for seven seconds, or two triple mushrooms for six consecutive boosts. Since there are shortcuts in Super Circuit that require a boost, if you get a mushroom early, you might need to decide if it's more important to hold on to the shortcut, or defend yourself from red shells. Speaking of items, Super Circuit has 10. This includes both the triple red and the triple green. There are 10 things you can get from an item box. This may seem a little underdeveloped compared to Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, which doubles that at 20 items, but I like it that way. Like other Mario Kart games, the quality of items increases as you get farther back in the pack. But with only 10 items and only 8 racers, the item pool for place is very limited so you always have a good idea of what your ops are packing. The tightness of only 8 racers is also a big factor to my enjoyment. In the background footage, you can see that most of the time there are less than 10 seconds between the first one to cross the finish line and the last. The tracks are also small to accommodate the low speed in the player count. All of this combines into a large amount of player interaction, even at high levels of play. In Mario Kart 8 you can go half the race without even seeing anyone else, except for their red shells. I personally think 50cc is the best way to play Super Circuit. At that speed you can fully engage with the deep strategies that the game offers while keeping a tight group and tight controls. So that brings us to the final piece of the puzzle. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch is a very pretty game. The graphics absolutely blow Super Circuit out of the water. But with the tracks winding every which way and going underwater and just having so much visual clutter, it makes the experience hollow for me. When I play 8 Deluxe, I'm never thinking about making decisions, I'm just hoping I'm headed the right way and looking at the pretty scenery. Super Circuit? I can tell at a glance where everything is, and it even shows shortcuts on the minimap. When was the last time the minimap mattered or even made sense? <laughs> in my opinion, the beautiful visual simplicity of Super Circuit just makes it so much easier to lock in and enjoy the game. So, despite graphical improvements, roster expansions, and hundreds of new courses, I continue to rely on the strategy, tight design, and graphical simplicity of Super Circuit. All of these things, and so much more, make it my favorite Mario Kart. Magister Dixie.